Hey guys, Zach here from MixChecks.com. Welcome back to another mix breakdown video. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down a gospel mix that I did. I'm gonna go through it track by track and show you how I got the sound that I got. Also, just a side note, if you'd like me to review any of your mixes or if you've mixed this song, you've downloaded the multi-tracks and you want me to listen to it, you can feel free to post it at MixChecks.com. I go through every mix on there and give my feedback. So I'd love to see you on the site. And without further ado, let's jump into this mix. Okay, so first I'm just going to let you hear a little bit of the mix so you can get an idea of what's happening as a whole. And then we'll go down track by track solo stuff so you can hear the processing that I did for each of the tracks. You surrender his life for me. He paid a debt. So high was the cost. More to me. Okay, so you can hear a nice, wide, big choir sound for this gospel track, uh, powerful lead vocal, and some uh, nice sounding drums, and that's pretty much what makes up this track. Uh, I did not do any color coding, sorry, uh, I just for this particular track, I didn't feel like I needed it to help me keep organized, so it's the default Logic Blue. And let's just start with the different buses we got going on. So I have a drums bus, which sounds like this. Let's find a good drum spot. And the only thing I have on the drum bus is the Oxford Inflator from Sonics. And it's cranked up to 100%. Um, this It's kind of like a compression saturation plug-in. It just it does its own thing, and it um, sounds good, and it sounded good on this particular mix. So I went with that. And then moving to the guitars bus. So nice and wide guitars. Um, just a little bit of EQ on the bus to get out some frequencies that were bothering me or a frequency that was bothering me and then just shave off a little high end to make them not so harsh. And then also just high passing the lows to get rid of everything you don't need on guitars. And then everything else is effects, which we can get into later. Uh, and then let's go to the drums specifically. 
So the way I do drums or the way I do kick is I separate it into three different tracks. So I have my recorded kick. I have a sub kick, which I just EQ and uh, low pass the just the low part of it. And then I also have a sample if I'm using a sample and I blend that in. And so this is what the um, the kick sounds like as a whole. And so on the kick bus, I guess, um, I'm just using some distortion, saturation, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using the Elysius, uh, what's it called, character. And I always find that about three is the max I can do before the distortion just starts sounding gross. Um, and then I, I turn this FET button on. And then if you just want to hear what the individual parts of the kick sound like. And so those three sounds combined make up the kick. And for the sample, I'm just using Slate Trigger. And then moving on to the snare. So it, it also has Slate Trigger, so it's blending in a sample, but you can still hear like some of the hi-hat bleed because the sample is only blended 60%. I like to keep as much of the original drums as possible, but sometimes if there's issues with the way they recorded, you just gotta use a sample to, to beef them up and bring them to that like commercial quality level. Um, on the toms, just doing my SSL channel strip, you can see boosting some high end. Um, I love this thing. It's pretty much on every single channel you can see it was on all these two and it's going to be on all of the channels coming up so i'm just adding a little brightness on the toms to give them that snap using the compressor on here and that's pretty much it so let me solo those real quick Yep, that's pretty much all that's going on on the toms. You can see about the same EQ and compression on all three. Um, pulling some of the uh, the low or the the mids out of the floor tom and mid tom, and then also doing the SSL high pass filter. Then for the overheads. Have them high passed all the way up on the channel strip. Pulling out some 500-ish. Um, also using this SSL compression. And then just some notch frequencies that kind of always bother me on overheads. There's usually somewhere in between three and 4K. And then all every now and then an eight, seven to eight K there's usually like a ring in there that I don't like and I'll, I'll notch those out a lot of times on the overheads and I mostly just use overheads as a cymbal mic um, which is why they're high pass so hard and then I let the the beef of the drums come from all the direct mics on the shells the next we just have your normal drum loop Nothing crazy happening on this. Just running it through the SSL channel strip for the, um, just the sound. Uh, nothing, 
nothing is really happening. Moving on to the bass. So the bass is. First in the strip is this Ampeg amp from Brainworks, just to give it a little character. And then from there, going into the SSL channel strip, um, not doing a lot EQ wise. A little bit of compression happening and a little bit of low passing just because it's a bass. And I like to cut out what I don't need. EQ wise, made a little notch for the kick, boosted the 100 where I want the bass itself to sit. And then also just some tone shaping up here, taking out some of the highs. And then also on bass, I to lay that foundation for the mix, I pretty much smash it with the LA-2A. Just because you don't want your bass going crazy, uh, these swells and stuff, which will make your mix really suffer. So you want your bass smashed, nice foundation, um, and then you also that notch for the kick helps the kick and the bass sit well together. He did it for you. He did it for On the keys, just the SSL channel strip. And really just doing the high pass filter and some compression. I liked the way they sounded otherwise, and I felt like that's all it needed. So you don't have to do anything if it's fine right out of the box. And for guitars, same thing. Nothing crazy, just high pass, low pass, and compression on the SSL channel strip. And like I already showed you on the guitar bus, the, that's where most of the EQ actually happened. This is just running through the SSL channel strips to give it that SSL character. And I have done null tests on the SSL strips from Brainworks to see if just putting it on without doing any processing actually changes the sound. And it does, which is why I put it on every single... Uh, channel strip it just kind of makes it all sound more cohesive like you're mixing on an SSL and then they had the organ split into the top and bottom so like the keys and then the feet bottom just compression and a little high passing still nothing crazy on the top I wanted to reduce a little bit of the high so it wasn't as piercing and didn't compete with the airiness of the vocal too much uh, and then also just compression to even it out and a little more high passing These bells were just a, an effect. I don't even, they don't play that often. Let me see. Yeah, they're really low in the mix. Just there for a little bit of extra flavor and ear candy. And then we have the strings. Nothing crazy happening on those. High pass pretty hard, just so they don't compete with anything that they don't need to be, and then compressed a little bit to even out the dynamics. And then 
in on this synth. So pulling out a little bit of 500-ish, you know, just to get rid of some of that muddiness and then also high passing so they don't compete with the bass or anything like that. Um, and then on these specifically, I used the real ADT, which is the, you know, the, the width kind of thing, the old school width trick from, from waves and Abbey road. And so to spread the synth sound out and give it some, some width, that's what I used. I, I, Try not to use this plugin too much on mixes just because it can cause phase issues, but you might see me use it once, maybe twice a mix if I need to widen something. Okay, and then synth lead. Just high pass and compression, like the other ones. And then also on this one, using the CLA 76 to kind of give it a little even more tone and compression. Just give it that hyper compressed sound. Okay, moving on to the lead vocal. This is where most of the processing happens. He paid a debt. So obviously first is pitch correction, Melodyne, then going from Melodyne into the SSL channel strip, adding a little bit of top end air right there and doing a little bit of high passing here, just kind of that initial treatment and also just some light compression. And I kind of treat this as like what I'm getting from tape. Like, so if someone was to send me, you know, what they recorded to tape, this is like what I, what I'm adding there. And then I'm going to do my other processing, my other normal processing after that. So it comes out of this and then into this de -esser. I like this de because it has, you know, it has two bands and then it also does like phase cancellation de-essing rather than just uh, dynamic de-essing. So it, it can, in, in some instances, it can actually be better than a normal, your normal de-essing plugin. Um, and I'll switch back and forth between this one and then a normal de -esser. I've really been liking the Logic de 2 lately, just the stock one. It works really well. Sometimes I'll use both if the S's, S's are really harsh. And then if they're really, really bad, then you'll just have to go in and automate them. It's just the, the nature of the beast when it comes to S's and T's and other plosives. So from here, from that de going into the REQ. I'm just pulling out 500 and then high passing it a little bit harder. It sounds like bypassed, and then once you take this 500 scoop out. Just kind of adds that smoothness to the vocal, and I, I pretty much do this on most vocals, and the thing that varies a lot is, you know, how hard I high pass it, and then if I need to add any airiness or any mids up here. And then finally, to even out all the dynamics of the vocal, because it is a pretty dynamic vocal, um, just using the CLA 76, the Blackie, it's all buttons in, super fast attack, fast release, and it's just in your face. He surrendered his life for me. Yep, 
Yep, I'm just really slamming that. And then finally, we have our gospel choir. So you can see all the altos, sopranos, all tenors, all quad tracked. And. And these are being sent to my choir bus. So this is what that sounds like. So in here, I'm not. There's n absolutely nothing on the tracks, like you can see, and they're all just balanced for level. And then from there, they're going to the choir bus, and then that's where the actual processing is happening. So. It's just the SSL strip and the CLA-76. So it's being compressed here a little bit, a little top-end air to help them kind of cut um, and be more present, pulling out a little 444. And from there, going into the, the bluey. And so now let's go into the effects. So I'm using a room verb, I'm using a slap delay, and I'm using a vocal verb. So the room verb is uh, bus four, which means I'm just sending instruments there to give the instruments a sort of glue and kind of put them all in the same room. So you can see everything that's being sent there to bus four. Um, and then finally on the vocal, so the vocal is going to all of them so a little bit of the room on the vocal to also bring in that glue with the rest of the instruments and then also the vocal reverb which is on top of that to give the vocal itself that super spacey sound and then a slap delay to kind of just the slap delay to me add it kind of gives it a more live feel too he showed completely dry no effects okay and finally we have the master bus so on a lot of projects, people want me to mix and master, so this is a semi-mixed and mastered as well, um, though true mastering is sending it to a mastering engineer. I'm not trying to say I'm a mastering engineer, it's just sometimes with budget restrictions, people want that commercial level, and so this is what I do to master my own mixes. Um, I don't do any, you know, hardcore linear linear phase EQ or anything like that. I just I do a pull tech on the mix bus to add top end and low end. I do another compressor just to kind of even it out a little bit, taking off like half of a dB. into the Shadow Hills compressor. Also, each one of these, so it has two compressors inside of it. It runs into an op opto compressor and then into a discrete compressor. Both of those uh, taken off about half a dB to a dB. And then this one also has a stereo width knob, which I try to never go past 115% because then you start having a bunch of phase issues and stuff like that. But I do use it to just give it that extra width. 
And then from there into the multi-presser from Logic. And I have these bands set and I pretty much use these bands on every mix the way they are. And this compressing, doing a multi-presser just kind of lets you get more headroom going into your final limiter and you can make your tracks louder, essentially. And so that's all this is doing. And a lot of times if your mix is harsh or uh, anything like that, you can use the top band to DS your mix and make sure it doesn't blow anyone's ears out with the piercing frequencies up there. So going from that into the adaptive limiter from Logic. And that's pretty much it. And then after the adaptive limiter, I just use a loudness meter to measure loudness. And then also while I'm mixing and mastering, I use the adapter, uh, the adapter metric AB plugin to go back and forth quickly between a reference mix and my mix to make sure I'm in the ballpark of commercially released music. And that is pretty much this whole mix. So if you want to see me mix it in in action, you can move on to the live mixing sessions that come after this. And if you want to hear the whole mix all the way through, you can listen to the quick mix that comes before this video in the playlist. So I will see you guys in the next video.